Hello and welcome to A Look Inside, which is going to be a series where I take apart old equipment and see what makes it tick, what makes it interesting and hopefully tell you a bit of information about stuff that I find interesting. And we're going to start off with this uh, TM3M slash 8C uh, XBBC audio link transmitter. Now, in order to understand exactly what kind of thing this was used for, I will give you a very brief crash course on how an outside broadcast works. So if you're out on the field and you're trying to send back either audio or vision or both for TV into a studio, two things are going to be really, really important to you. The first is you need to make sure that your audio gets from where you are back to the studio. That's the first thing, obviously. But you also want to make sure that the studio's audio gets to you. If you have someone sitting in the studio asking questions, your talent obviously needs to be able to hear that. But chances are someone is going to be telling you when you're on air, when you're off air, telling you if you have any problems with the link, all that kind of thing. And that's pretty much what this transmitter was designed to do. You see, nowadays the done thing is to have either a subcarrier on satellite or just have an audio coming back via mobile phone signal. Um, but in the days of microwave links and even right on to the early day of satellite links, that wasn't really possible. So the studio would have had one of these transmitting a 25 watt or so carrier on well, in this case, either 854.5 or 859.8 megahertz. And you would have had a receiver in your OB van and you would have been able to hear the studio's clean feed, as we call it. However, this was also, could also be used for local radio um, outside broadcasts. Basically, you would have one of these in the back of a car and you could plug a microphone straight into this, stick up a carrier and either the nearest transmitter mast or the studio would be able to receive your signal from here and put you on air. And that was how it used to be done. Obviously, as you can see, this hasn't been uh, in use for quite a while. But with that in mind, it suddenly makes sense why this thing looks like it was designed to uh, withstand nuclear war. Um, it's extremely heavy, extremely well built, massive steel um, box and with the front cover on, now unfortunately I don't have a front cover to show you but there was actually a cover that would go on the front here and screw into these um, threaded uh, standoffs all the way around here that essentially made this one sealed unit um, and that meant that it could be thrown around and withstand all the usual carry-on that you get on outside broadcasts. As you can see, this particular one originally came from um, TV outside broadcasts a very long time ago. Incidentally, there is a video floating around on YouTube and it's like 13 years old at this point, but you may have come across it and it's a recording that was taken off air on 859.8 megahertz, funny enough. This is the clean feed circuit from BBC News Television Centre in London. Telephone 0208 624 8000. It's very possible that one of these units used to live in the East Tower of Television Centre and was being used to transmit that message. Um, very possible indeed that it was one of these. Not this exact one, because this one would have been in Northern Ireland by that time, but certainly one very like this. So let's have a look at it a bit closer. So you'll see, obviously, we have an RF output. We have on a UHF connector. We have an LNE power input. And if you've never seen an LNE connector, that's what that looks like. It's pretty much the same shape and size as, a, as an XLR, but it's designed specifically to carry mains power. Unfortunately, these aren't really used anymore. You can see we can also have a battery plugged into this, and this is actually designed to be a sort of a UPS, in that if you power this by mains, you can have the battery plugged in as well, and then whenever you wick the power out of it, it will just continue working off battery. 
you can see we can actually connect it up to our remote and change the settings remotely. Again, because these were designed that you could stick it in a transmitter somewhere and it might never be attended to. So you might want to be able to remotely change the channel and things like that. Uh, and incidentally, on the side here, there are these fold out rack ears so that you can mount it in a rack. Top we have quarter inch, or well, that's probably a B gauge rather than a normal quarter inch, but an audio input, line input, microphone input. Now I did find this a bit funny that the line input is the wrong sex, but um, I'm not sure if that used to be a BBC thing or what the story is there, but it's odd that the, because those should both be the same. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. They also have this nice analog meter on the front, which you can use this switch to select what it's actually showing. A channel sw frequency selector, as I've said, and I don't know if you can see this very well. Yeah, you might be able to see that, that you actually pull the, you, you can't just switch it. You have to actually pull the front of it out and switch down like that. Um, and that's how you change the frequency. Nothing else really to see because of everything is on the front. It's just a really, really solid box. So let's take these screws out and have a look inside it. Now with the screws removed, you can see that the front lifts out like that. And we can see the glorious innards. Let's just set that on the floor for a second and we'll lift that uh, crate out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so this is the unit. Now, let's see, what can we, what can you see? I need to be able to see that you're actually able to see what I'm talking about. There we go. So, if we look, uh, well, first of all, you can see right from the get-go, again, this is really solidly built, like it could survive nuclear war, as I've said. So we have this massive toroidal transformer, we have this enormous capacitor, and then round here, oops, uh, round the front here, oh, again, there's a point, look at, um, designed to stop you taking the whole front off when you set it up. These little bars keep the front of it from touching the, uh, from touching the ground. Anyway, you can see that we have a very early DC-DC power converter um, with 20 to 60 volts in, which oddly enough is exactly the same as what's listed on the battery connector on the front. Um, and then we have 12 volts output and I think there's a negative rail there somewhere possibly oh well, maybe not I'm not sure anyway you get the idea it's a power supply a massive one the big capacitor that's literally there as far as I can tell that is so that whenever you're switching on the front here between battery and mains that overrides the gap um, if you do it nice and quickly like that it you're, there will be no interruption to the transmitter and similarly if you work the mains out of the front this will ride over the gap as the relay changes over. As far as the actual transmitter goes in the side here we have this module that's made up of three individual boards all joined together on a card sort of idea. Down at the bottom we have the UN3 slash 52A and if we look inside here we can see a couple of nice old chips and crucially we have a temperature compensated crystal oscillator and that gives a sort of a hint as to what this does. The other thing that gives a hint as to what this does is this pin here which if we bring you in you might just be able to make out that that says AFC on it and of course that stands for automatic frequency control and that wire disappears onto the top card. So what these three boards are, down at the bottom, this is actually a controller. So it makes sense to start with the first one first. So let's, let me just turn this around. 
Um, now, unfortunately, that's upside down for you, but uh, there isn't really a better way of showing this, and I don't think it makes much difference, so let's just go with it. You'll see, first of all, that if we follow these wires back, the blue wires are coming from the microphone input, I believe. Let me just check that. Yes, that is indeed the microphone input. It's coming to there, and the wire here is coming from the line input. And that, again, gives a very good hint as to what this board is. And this is actually the modulator unit. So we see this is the MD3-9. And what this actually does is it takes our audio inputs. The microphone one has a nice balanced transformer on it. And then there is pre-amplifier section, we have the actual modulator itself, and then we have some filtering. And this modulator produces a signal at around about 105 megahertz. And that means that we could probably actually connect this up, the output here. We could probably actually listen to that on a normal FM radio if we wanted to, but uh, we're not going to actually power this thing up for a wide variety of reasons that I don't want to go into right now but that automatic frequency control line comes from the board below. And again, that gives a hint as to what the board below is doing. So if we spin this back around again, um, there's the um, automatic frequency control line. So what's actually happening is this board is the automatic phase control unit and basically what that's doing is it is tuning the output of that to keep it on the right frequency and that's also why if we check if we look closely you can follow the wires back from this and you'll find that there's a wire from this switch on the front that allows us to choose the two frequencies and that allows it to settle on two particular frequencies and then in the middle of the unit way in there now I'm afraid I'm not going to completely dismantle the unit to let you see the innards of that just right now but right in there is the CO2 slash 26 board now as I say I can't actually pull it out of there without dismantling basically the whole unit but what that does is that takes the 105 megahertz input from the modulator and up converts it to our final output of 800 odd megahertz and that's that's the whole innards of that and then the output from that phase control or from that up converter board goes into the power amplifier board on the front and that is how you get your RF out of this unit so yeah that was that was a look inside this uh, link transmitter and a sort of a brief description as to what kind of thing it was used for and uh, I hope you lot find that interesting.